Hello, hello. We're going back to this reverse recruitment. I'm going to be listening to something while doing this. Check it out, y'all. Uh, I'm just listening to it because I need to listen to it because I've been doing insane. I've been trying to run Skull and Shackles, and turns out Skull and Shackles is really badly designed. Give them no quarter. Oh, hey, yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. But, um... So, oh, yeah. yeah, the the Diablo, so if you drink an Elder Vampire's blood, you get more powerful. Um, you have access to more potent <laughs> disciplines. You can raise your disciplines up from... Like, they're rated on dots in terms of one to five. One is the basic. Five is the most powerful starting really? character. Yeah. Get. Well, or it can eventually get, like, a starting character can only get up to three dots in one discipline, but, like... Um... Yeah, it ended on the GM in the edition. Yeah, that's you get to five um, dots. But eventually, you could, if you you could, like a 13th generation vampire, I believe, could never raise their disciplines above five. Oh no, actually, uh, yeah, that, um, you have to be generation, I think, seven or lower to get any anything above a five. No, I think you could get it like if you were generation eight. Uh, maybe, maybe I forget. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. What, I can't remember like, the exacts, but yeah. Either way, but in general, it, basically, yeah, it's a power level uh, sort of shorthand, yeah. like. You, you, you want to be more powerful, you, you uh, uh, do. It's also uh, incredibly addicting. It's a very yeah. euphoric you experience. Super, yeah. You yeah. become super vampire gene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's why a younger vampire would want to do that, uh, not just to get rid of this person who so controls so power, but also to literally take their power. So um, now the so this adventure, the first thing they do is talk about the Albury and um, how it works and expand the mechanics of what 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 is Diablo Lee and how does it work? There's multiple parts to it. Um, and it also uh, introduces uh, a new ritual so that an entire group of vampires can benefit from it. We'll get that to in a second. So yeah, first we should talk about the actual process of Diablo Lee <laughs> because- Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Long story short, first you drain their blood, then you drain their soul. Right, uh, but so, yeah, like you mentioned blood pool earlier, that's like yeah. literally how many points of blood you have, and you can spend that to do various things or to heal damage. So you have to drain the blood pool of the vessel, in this case, which is the Methuselah, the more powerful vampire, or not necessarily Methuselah, yeah. but the more powerful vampire you're trying to, you know, diabolize. Um and once you drain and they'll have you yes. so like 20 blood points or whatever so you yeah. have to get rid of all that blood so that's a lot of biting so um then you then you have to roll make a strength check with the difficulty of nine uh so you have to roll at least a nine on a d10 um and for each success the vessel loses one health level and a, a vampires have usually like seven Five or seven health levels to start with, and probably more if they're an elder. The vampire. wings of death yeah. and furrow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it does. Oh, right. Yeah. So, um, which <laughs> I love this idea because, like, you could just fail at it. You could just spend forever if your your character isn't physically very strong to drain their life because you're that's draining their life force at this point, not just their blood. Yeah. Um, if, they're, if they're in torpor, yeah. they basically have to fight their way out. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> And, and then only when you drain their last bit of health level uh, from it, that that's the rebirth that, well, for the Diabolist yes. and the the victim, the vessel suffers oh, final death. And breath. that's when they get the benefits of Diablo. Uh, so the, which I, <laughs> I love that, like, why do you just have to make this mechanical thing? Like, yeah, keep rolling strength. All right, well, the vessel's helpless, so just keep rolling strength. Keep rolling. You can't just hand wave it. But if it's a fight, then it's going to take fucking forever, unless your character's been maxed for strength. Um, because it's not, I mean, like, strengthless, so so unarmed bad. or something. It's not just so strength. Fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um... So your one strength, you know, uh, wispy Toreador character is going to take a while. <laughs> now, one thing I don't remember, um... Now, faking, I remember, just puts a vampire to Torpor. It doesn't, like, final death them, right? Oh, no, no. It's, it, yeah, it just paralyzes. So, and there's a yeah. ton of rituals and powers and whatnot that allow you to just blast the stake out. 
right but this. so that would be so basically the way diablery works is you can't really do it in combat it doesn't really work unless it i don't see how especially with a more powerful vampire how it's going to work well also another thing is if you're fighting the victim and you're you're doing health damage to them um like i guess you could Don't chunk follow. off mo well you, 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 you chunk off all their health to where they're paralyzed or they're incapacitated and then you just have to drain out a little bit of blood uh to to get that well, uh, you still have to get you still have to get all the blood yeah but i mean assuming in combat they've probably been spending blood so they're not going to yeah, be yeah. you know as they're going to be boosting their boosting their abilities they're going to be using disciplines they're going to be mm -hmm. he healing rapid mm -hmm. healing yeah and so really, yeah, and there's the risk of if you kill kill them badly enough with like aggravated damage, so they can't heal it, mm -hmm. you could just give them final death without the game gaining the benefit. Yep, you don't get a chance to do it. So you know, dousing them in gasoline might be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and, and also, there. yeah, uh, and once once you do that. Um, the cut you get you have to make a frenzy check oh yeah so frenzy is a whole thing for vampires as you command right oh that yeah yeah um if they feel threatened if they feel overexcited if they like really pissed off or even just they're just blood drunk they have a chance to just go nuts and there's the roll trek there's the fox friend i think it's called fox frenzy or something like no that might have been a different one roll trek is the fear frenzy where you Flee in terror from like fire or oh, something tight. that is really really scary, um, like scarier than you. And then there's the feeding frenzy type, where you just go berserk, actual berserk, and start attacking everything around you. So the frenzy they're talking about is the regular frenzy. Yeah, so it's so good to suck the blood of an elder vampire that you can just go crazy from it. Um, just dare to say no to vampire blood, apparently. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know if it's a, if it was a uh, obvious if the victim doesn't suffer final that they're only partially diabolized, then uh, they, it's really scary for them. Um, and then uh, normally though only one vampire can benefit from one vessel for one elder vampire. You, even if multiple, uh, usually you would need more than like that. You're a weaker vampire. You need your buddies to help you take down this elder but on the other hand this adventure invents a new ritual called the ritual of the bitter rose uh which the characters can learn during the adventure so they can all benefit and all get power from uh, uh draining this elder vampire uh so <laughs> yeah at the time this was written uh this yeah. was like a big thing and then suddenly there's a bunch of other versions of it floating around like in mm -hmm. the sabbat or with the asamites or <laughs> yeah it kind of like became a little less impressive over time yeah exactly uh but i just love it's very much like oh this is a game of personal horror but what if wait it's an ensemble cast we need all the player characters need to benefit from fighting the big bad oh okay we'll do well, okay well then they they can have the ritual they, they can do the ritual. they gotta split the loot they gotta split the loot you gotta split the loot you know there's no dragon key points in uh uh, it's not like World of Warcraft. You, you, you need you can't run the you can't run the same raid over and over again. You can't kill the Methuselah multiple times. Um, I mean, you'd have to find more of them, and by that time, the GM might get you know, sorry, ST might get a little storyteller might get a little sick of you guys. Like, so we gotta find more Methuselahs to drain. Uh, no, <laughs> Although that that actually is a proposed campaign type, which kind of makes me wonder if there would have been a, you know, how far are we Awakening uh, Diablery, you know, minutes, series yeah. potentially. Uh, the universe. Awakening Diablo, you said the call was important. Think about yeah. it. I, so, I, yeah, that's true. It, it would have been like Chicago by night, Seattle by yeah. night. Awakening Diablo, and then fill in a place, you know, Berlin yeah. or yeah. Cleveland. There's a Methuselah in Cleveland. Go take him out, you know. I don't know why, but. <laughs> why not? No one's going to expect a Methuselah in Cleveland. Is he the one who's making everybody to astronauts? Or, I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's why they're astronauts, to escape the power. They just pleasure. subconsciously are trying to flee him. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Clearly, uh, and his name is Drew Carey. Um, Drinking Malkavians, I tell you. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually that could have been interesting. Um, I do like the idea of a Gonzo vampire campaign where it's like, all right, you have access to a high grade mil anti like anti tank weapon, uh, military weapons, and all this other shit. 
Uh, yeah, go go beat up a dude who's been asleep for a thousand, for 500 years uh, before he learns what cell phones and automatic hand, uh, weapons are. Uh, Just in introduce yeah. him to uh, depleted uranium rounds firsthand. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, he might have spirit rituals and, you know, undead guardians and oh, horrible God. curses, but, like, he ain't, yeah, he doesn't know what uh, 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 a Barrett anti-material rifle is. So, yeah, yeah that, that would actually be kind of fun. But now, Diablo's kind of not cool with the vampires. Is, 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 isn't that right? You got to remember, a, a, one of the main inspirations for uh, Vampire the Masquerade was Anne Rice's uh, Vampire Chronicles. Mm-hmm. You and one no of those honor. big things is the biggest crime is to kill your own kind. So, while this, while certain sects like the okay. Sabbat or the Asimites might be like kind of cool with it as long as you do it a certain way, mm -hmm. you're almost always you know the, the default campaign is you know, you're basically answered to the Camarilla, and they're like, no, we're rare enough as it is, don't go around killing us. Mm -hmm. So you're not supposed to create new ones without permission from the prince and. Unless some kind of you know authority figure declares open game on you, nobody's supposed to kill you. They can just make your life hell mm -hmm. or banish you. Yeah, um, but yeah, Diablery, that That's the kind of thing that like uh, is one of the big no nos. Right, uh, it's even worse than just killing. Yeah, uh, there's a whole section about the consequences of Diablery because yes, um, unlike the real world, there's there's hard magical there's definite proof to prove someone's done diablory um, yeah imagine like, if we could just look at a murderer through a special lens and there's little black lines going through their aura and it's like yep he's a murderer yep so and not so just a like and, and because it, you're the it's not so well the, and that only applies to diablory okay. you can kill an elder and if you don't diablorize them there's no necessarily proof right I mean, right the, yeah it has to be Diablory, but I'm seeing that that specific thing. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just basically, they'll just blood hunt your shit. Yeah. Blood hunts, I forget if the blood hunt, I don't think blood hunts allowed Diablory. I, I don't think they did. They just allowed you to kill that vampire. Don't look at yeah. me. So, so yeah. yeah. They have multiple, there's a, there's a thaumaturgy, the blood magic. There's, bl of course, vampire wizards. And they have a, a, a path called the Chase of Blood that lets them tell if they've ever drunk the blood of a vampire of an earlier generation. Uh, there's also the aura reading, which you mentioned. Um, and there's also, like, people can just get bad vibes from you. Um, yep. So, uh, any vampire can, can sense the bad vibes uh, that something's wrong against them. So Now, supposedly uh, yeah. it fades with time depending on the edition, but mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, this adventure does have the fading with time stuff so right um yeah this is uh so that's that's the setup is first uh, here's this thing uh killing an elder vampire drinking their blood will benefit you make your character more powerful but if they find out you do it and there's ways they can find out that you do it and that you can't defend against and you can't hide from they do this 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 uh, path of blood thing they're just gonna know and then they're gonna kill you and so, you know how, you know how yeah. some overdramatic GMs have this habit of, you know, the you know some some important figure is going to automatically just know everything so. that they have no way of knowing. I've got it. Yeah, it happened a lot. Okay. Yeah. The prince looks at you and and says in a cryptic, you know, cryptic manner, "I know what you've done." <laughs> you know, it's like the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. So like, this is also an so this is an adventure meant for new characters uh as a one shot as a one shot and one it's the premise of go against the most powerful vampire you could possibly find uh to kill them take their blood and this will make your character an evil villain to all of vampire society and they can totally tell that you've done it if they actually bother to check and there's no way to stop this um yeah so hope you aren't too attached to the player character <laughs> I mean, I guess you have to hide out somewhere for a long time, lay low, and wait for it to start, start fading. Yeah. And well, I mean, even like, with that, because the taste of blood or the aura reading. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, yeah. the the aura never fades, and the taste of blood never fades, as far as I can tell. So. Um, um, it depended yeah. on, again, it depended on the edition. I think in yeah. some editions or some versions of it, the aura does eventually start to fade to like black flecks mm -hmm. instead of uh, veins in your aura. So, and then, yeah. yeah. Um, but Taste of Blood was probably permanent. Yeah. Uh, so, like, 
I just love... Here's a thing that will condemn your character and totally change their path if they even survive it, which is highly unlikely. Um, it, but uh, here you go. We're, we're going to stick to this premise of a thing you shouldn't... That vampires don't want you to do, but you're... We're, that's the yeah. premise. And then eventually they open it back up kind of with, like, yeah. Anarchs who, as a faction, have been featured but never that prominently. And yeah. of course, everybody's uh, everybody's favorite, the Sabbat. The yeah, they do. Big, spooky, yeah. Sp you know, boogeyman vampires who run around in packs and randomly embrace a bunch of people who use the shock troops. Mm -hmm. Gotta love that. Now, there are um, examples of, well, they do mention, I think, at some point that the Anarchs really want this ritual of the Bitter Rose. So, like, and because you can learn it, that could actually be the real loot of the scenario is learning this ritual. Uh, and then spreading it to your Anarch buds so you can you can uh, yeah. empower them to go after all the elders uh, holding controlling everything that's the first chapter is just well, it's actually cha technically chapter two yeah. uh, chapter one is just the introduction so uh, but chapter and so then we get into chapter three the wanderer uh, who is the target of this uh, who is the person you are going to try to uh, diabolize and his name is Mik uh, Miklon Tek Hey, give me a second. Scroll yeah. Uh, Miklon Teketli. Miklon Tekutli. Miklon Tekutli. Yeah. Which is technically a uh, Mesoamerican name. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, this is the, the vampire you're doing is um, he ruled over the Mayans. Uh, hundreds of years ago and has been asleep for the last 600 years before the, the he, he fell asleep around 1000 AD um, and fell asleep before the Spanish showed up and so he has no the idea what the fuck happened but um, the vampire that that uh, uh, so he was I in the Pacific Northwest so. so yeah it gives his history of what he was yes. doing as a mortal so um, basically he was just a, uh, uh, just a Not dude so in you know living in America uh, 50 60 years before the birth of Christ and uh, ran into a vampire who he didn't know who he was uh, this this unnamed sire is clearly a gangrel but uh, uh, they, actually they never... he's clearly gangrel founder because he's fourth chance. Um, well, no. Remember, was, was uh, he he no. He was. He was. Uh, he was fifth. Uh, well, the the his sire was fourth, and uh, Mech Talon. No, he's the, he's fourth. Yeah, because remember he diabolized. Oh right, right. My bad. Yeah, my bad. yeah. So skipping ahead. Um, yeah. So our our protagonist, uh, uh, the Wanderer, gets uh, got by a bear. Okay. The gang girl sees this. Is like, hey, wanna wanna not wanna live? And he's like, sure. And then now he's a vampire. And then he just wanders, uh, the Wanderer wanders North America for hundreds of years uh, before going south uh, and find, finding the Mayans. And he was like, hey, I am I have these cool powers. And they started worshiping, worshiping him like a god. And uh, then he got bored. And uh, Nosferatu showed up, told him about, hey, vampires are fighting each other. You want to join the war, huh? The eternal war between good and evil? Which is kind of a, hmm, because they're both vampires. They're both technically pretty evil. Easily done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the Wanderer instead decides to uh, diabolize the Nosferatu. Uh, and that's how he raises his generation up. Um, you probably need some mouthwash after that. <laughs> uh, so the yeah and and uh but eventually uh so yeah that, that you know we mentioned torpor that you recently came out of um what is torpor in in terms of vampire the masquerade well it basically it's just a very deep sleep where effectively your animated body is no longer animated i mean you're there but you just don't wake up for a very long time uh this can be a way of recovering from extreme damage so anybody can go into it but as vampires get older, they tend to stop, stop sleeping every day and start sleeping yes. months or years or centuries, you know. So the oldest vampires can go to sleep for like a thousand years, and that's normal. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Not you get so old fast. enough, you notice how time just flies yes. by. Yeah. And when you were a kid, it's like 
a, a minute's so. a long time. Mm -hmm. You get old enough and suddenly it's like, oh shit, it's been a month. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so he, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, so yeah, another thing is, um, as he rules the Mayans, he gets really sick of the priests who, who are sucking up to him, but like, hey, 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 can you, can you make us immortal? We'll teach you some blood magic. And he learns blood magic. Um, and this is where he figures out the ritual of bitter roses. Um, and he makes some of the peasants into vampires and they, they like, hey, we worship you as a god. And you made us cool. We'll do anything you want. Okay, well, I want to kill some of you and drink your blood. See if that does anything for me. Awesome. Um, and... Noted, by the way, the practice used by many other vampires because, you know, it's like to add spice or really because the potency of the blood of mortals just doesn't so do it for them anymore. Yeah, um, that is a thing in uh, Vampire. I know once you reach a certain, like, I believe 13th generation vampires are the most powerful vampires that can drink animal blood and, and still survive. But if you go above that, you can only survive on human blood. And then if you go above a certain generation, you can only survive on uh, vampire blood. The very fact they're going back and forth. It might have been a lower generation, but again, they changed so much between editions and books and who wrote what. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of writers and not a whole lot of central cohesion. Glory to the I mean, they had people who were specifically running different lines, mm -hmm. but then you'd read, read, one, read it one way in one book and one way in another, and they had a hand wave called the Golden Rule, which was, if you don't like a rule, don't use it. But yeah, that actually tells you a lot about everything we're going to see in this book, to be honest. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Uh, no, for sure. So he gets really... See, he hates the priests, even though they worship him as a god. Uh, he finds out about lupines, uh, werewolves, um, and they... Because he's a gangrel, the gangrel are the bestial vampires who are the, the easiest to get along with werewolves, uh, the wild vampires. They're like, cool, we'll just, we'll just be cool to each other. Uh, and in fact, we'll, we'll worship you as a ruler, too. And... Uh, and this is how we know it's a first ed, uh, yeah, <laughs> pre pre werewolf the apocalypse uh, game, because yeah, yeah, as a werewolf the apocalypse coming out, they're like, no, we don't like, uh, we do not like vampires. They are evil. Get of the worm. They are corrupted hell spawn that have to be destroyed on sight. We'll only make temporary alliances as it suits us to, to preserve ourselves. So, yeah. But in First Ed, uh, the Lupines would always team up with the Garu for, oh, okay, sorry, with the Gangrel for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting that he calls the Lupines his Get with a capital, like the Get of Fenris, which is a, a, yeah. a, a, a Garu werewolf tribe. But, like, I don't think it's these guys are just. Oh, no. Yeah. Because um, that wouldn't make any sense. But, uh, yeah, so he built a special pyramid to sleep because he decides, man, I just want to take a nap, like a really long nap. Um, and some of his lupine uh, guards decide to go with him and uh, then the priests were all killed and some of his vampire assistants or uh, servants were all uh, trained or like went in with him and uh, oh yeah, there's another ritual he learned called the quenching of the lambent flame, which allows him to weaken a vampire's generation so that they could survive on uh, animals uh, instead of because any vampire he made was extremely powerful uh, so he they wouldn't be able to survive on animals but so um, yeah so he's just sleeping in this pyramid for like a thousand years and that's and oh but he does have a codex of the damned and codex of the damned is a uh, very very much a plot MacGuffin because Somehow the priest copied it. Somehow copies of that got out. And somehow uh, a copy of a copy got to the Tremere, which again, the wizard vampires. And they uh, translated it and figured it out. And that, perhaps that's where the ritual of the Bitter Rose came from. Um, and which, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, there's kind of, again, a no lot surprised. of retcon in there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and uh, we get a stat block, and now his stats are weaker, be uh, re and reflect that that because he's been in torpor, so he doesn't like have the. Uh, but his stats are pretty good. Like 
his low stat is a three with appearance and manipulation. His high stat is intelligence at a nine. Uh, and like normally player characters were rated on one to five for stats. Like you, you uh, couldn't really couldn't really get that high. Fourth uh, Jenny, you can hit nine. Yeah. Um, and boy, he got a lot of a lot of disciplines. Oh also, yeah. Yeah. Also, what's kind of interesting is uh, again the whole thaumaturgy thing. Like, mm. no, it's exclusive to the Tremere. Wait, there's earlier versions of it that are basically the same. Mm-hmm. It, it it can never make up their mind on that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was just like back and forth on it. Or, let's see, other weird things. Like, the Humanity Zero is supposed to reflect the, thing, the fact that he's completely inhuman. Where in later editions, they give him a, you know, path of enlightenment of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, so normally, uh, yeah, humanity was basically the equivalent of sanity for vampires. Um, and sanity and morality. If you went yeah. to Zero, you were a non-player character. You could not. You, that, was, yeah. that was a, a oh, yeah. game-limiting thing. You, you uh, basically, I forget yeah. the exact term for it, but you went feral. You yeah. got that right. So uh, it was a way to keep uh, player characters from being... Absolute dicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then basically the path, all the paths of enlightenment basically kind of ruined that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, my, you know, one, just by existing, but two, I just gave players loopholes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but he he's you know humanity zero and he was a calm stable ruler apparently uh, oh, yeah yeah uh, and uh, yeah he sounds pretty hard to fight with all of his uh, uh, powers. Yeah. honestly one of the big ones was the poisson shield yeah uh, which I'm pretty sure that's not what he called it but um, yeah just a guess but uh, yeah yeah that that's, uh, that would be his answer to the anti-material rifle. Yeah, uh, it stops all invisible kinetic shield. It stops all inanimate projectiles, thrown knives, bullets, etc. Uh, such projectiles. Tank shell, yeah. yeah. tank shell, something. Mm-hmm. Uh, melee's okay though, and so is thaumaturgy or other disciplines. Um, he also had celerity three, fortitude five, potence five. So, yeah, uh, good luck getting through. Fortitude was his damage resistance, so he has stamina 6 and fortitude 5. So good luck getting through anything. Uh, and with celerity 3, he was pretty fucking fast, too. So, yep. yeah. Um, He'd basically be able to hit you with, I believe at that time it was three extra attacks. At that time it was for the cost of one blood, you get three extra attacks. Mm-hmm. So he bumps one blood, and he's got four moves. Total moves without having to split his attention. Or, yeah, it was just, he, he was full on um, SNK boss syndrome. You know, he, he was impo- you know, he was definitely there to make sure that you just threw as many quarters into the machine. Yeah. Uh, it's actually noted that the playtester, a lot of playtesters lost characters playtesting this. Oh, did you? Uh... It, yeah, it's, it's an absolute meat grinder. Yeah. Um... Actually, I think it's in the dedications. Uh, hold on. Special thing, yeah. To all yeah, special things. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> this book is dedicated, dedicated to all the characters who died in the playtesting of this story. He really, really, as as will be seen in well the next episode. Um, he he really threw a he throws a lot of stuff at the at the piece at the player characters, and it is yeah. just insane. Yeah, as he should, because like he really set up this dude. To be very powerful, uh, and even if it, the entire fight adventure was fight this dude, like uh, uh, it was just yeah. Sorry, it just doesn't feel like a single you know adventure to me. It feels like a campaign in of its in and of itself. At least it should be if you were going to try to make it worth something. The build up to something this big, it's like yep. we're going to fight an elder dragon. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I think part of this was the. Um, if this was developed early on in the vampire game line, they were still figuring out what they want to do. And, like, I feel like if you're an RPG publisher, but even in the 90s, like, TSR is still around and knocking out shit every week, every month. Like, <laughs> it's natural to want to do a dungeon crawl. And But, like, th- that's sort of the problem is Vampire the Masquerade is not about dungeon crawling, and it doesn't have the same... The reason you go on a dungeon crawl in D&D is to get the loot to do the quest and get the loot. 
um, and the game mechanically rewards you by having lists of loot and associating monsters with loot. You kill this monster, you get to roll on loot table in or whatever. Um, and the but a vampire doesn't have any of that mechanics or systems, and it doesn't really reward you for loot. There are there are rules to represent like how much wealth and resources and guns and stuff cost money, but like that's easily accomplished in any number of ways and the game isn't about that so like and loot doesn't make your character substantially more powerful unlike D&D most of the time like in D&D you get a powerful magic item your character is much more powerful um, but in Vampire it doesn't work that way usually so this is kind of like well players love dungeon cr people love dungeon crawls let's give them a dungeon crawl with loot they like that right yeah uh, so um, but yeah now, with a uh, vampire, it was supposed to be a game of personal horror and experiences given over, like things like, you know, you role play the scene very well, so you get a, you get you know kind of experience. Did you learn a valuable lesson? We what, did you like manage to you know role play out a good moral to the story, sort of thing? Did your character grow as a person? These are actual like, you know, points to you know get issued after each session. So, you know. Uh, did you, you get an extra experience if the uh, campaign came to a satisfying narrative conclusion? Yeah, that's that's how you get experience in the you know the old world the world of darkness. Now, you know a lot of people would BS their way through it, but still, mm -hmm. it just becomes this whole issue of this was definitely. I kind of want to see the Together. reverse of this done with a D and D module. Yeah. Where they try to make it that. very it's much just... about character development and Ugh. actual role playing, and then see how that kind of weighs like, out. Like not having two healers kind of yeah. sucks. But do it in like the old systems. Uh, I'm sure but, somebody's trained. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, it would be interesting to see other uh, if they've done other dungeon crawl type adventures just in general, um, and uh, as well. So, uh, but uh, Baz is joining us. Uh, hello, Baz. How you doing? Hi, Baz. Oh yeah, I was totally here the whole time. I was just in the back, you know. Well, you are also in Torpor. Uh, you just I was in Torpor. That is exactly what it was. Yeah, uh, it happens to a lot of uh, players of Vampire the Masquerade. It's it's a common uh, flaw, uh, you know. Um, so uh, you read the first uh, half of the adventure. Now we briefly went over it, but like, um, well, Sean is an old hand at the World of Darkness. What about you? What what's your background with the World of Darkness? Um, I played during second edition. Okay. Um, prior to the, uh, the release of Vampire the Requiem, I played uh, up until the end day in, in the end time stuff. Okay. So the, you're... Thin, the Thin Blood storyline, yeah. Okay, you're broadly familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, this adventure, what? How did this strike you, Baz? Like in terms of uh, what? Just the premise alone, because we were just talking about the, the the dungeon crawling aspect of it, which is a bit odd for vampire. It Indeed. doesn't really fit. If you were running, uh, actually for both of you, if you were running this adventure, how would you, would you, th you, I mean, would you throw this into a vampire campaign or would you start a vampire cam campaign off this way? Or is this like everyone grab a stack of pre-rolled uh, uh, Bruja ninjas and see which, how many of them make it out? Like that would be interesting. Kind of like a peasant funnel, but for vampires. But uh, I don't know. Um, John, what, what, how would you use this adventure with this premise uh, adventure in, in a Ooh. vampire game? With the peasant funnel, that does sound interesting, but I think if I were to really do this, oh. I would, I think I mentioned, I already mentioned that I'd kind of make it a campaign where you have to, like, each, you know, chapter of it builds, up, instead of it being its own little chapter, it builds up to refining. the big event, Oof, the end of this level. campaign, where you finally make the assault. Because mm -hmm. you gotta come correct with this stuff. You can't just run you know nose Ooh. first into this yeah it's, it's a it's a massive brick wall yeah so it's definitely not for starting characters and while you can slip it into a campaign they say um it, it doesn't really feel cohesive with anything so just, i would yeah. say it's a build-up you have to like start off maybe the characters do some other diablo on the way up to practice the ritual maybe <laughs> they uh you know they, they so arm so themselves big. better they gain some strength and because they know this is out there and nobody else has gotten it yet and, as and they might have to silence other people that could be an adventure in and of itself they do cover up to basically prevent other people from getting to, getting to the Methuselah first but I wouldn't do it as a, like a one shot kind of situation mm -hmm. um, I would personally think this this is the campaign 
Uh, Baz, what about you? Like, how would you approach this? Uh, okay, yeah, so there's a lot of things working against the players here. It's yeah, sure. Geographically, like, if you're not censored, if it's not a Mexico set it, like, setting, like, that you're playing your game in, mm -hmm. vampires aren't great at traveling. Yeah, that's another thing we haven't even talked about, like, uh, and that's more in the covered in the second half of the book, but, like, just the premise is, like, almost all vampire games are set, like, in North America, yes. like, in, in America and Canada. I mean, there's, there's European source books, too, but, like, this game at the very beginning sort of references Chicago by night. And so it's like, go from Chicago to the middle of the jungle in the Yucatan, uh, which is a place the player characters are probably not going to have any wilderness survival skills, uh, to finding blood uh, because they're going to need a lot of fucking blood to get through this yeah. adventure um, just for healing and for boosting their abilities in combat. Um, and just simple survival. Vampires need like one point of blood a night to not go hungry. Um, and a human only has like uh, a pro seven? Yeah, something like, like seven. seven total, but that's like gonna kill them. Yeah. So, uh, and most vampire player characters don't want to kill humans as they feed because that lowers their humanity, which is your, you know, how much of an asshole are you, stat? And if you go too much of an asshole, you d you you lose your character. So, um, I just imagine this big vampire expedition with like uh, cargo trains of of porters carrying blood bank, you know, mobile blood bank shit. God, through the jungles. Like. Well, basically, you probably are going to lose humanity no matter what you do because yeah. you're going to have to stop off at some village somewhere and scare the shit out of the locals. And yeah, you know, this is something I was kind of thinking of is that um, that could be the campaign itself. Yeah, is just getting from don't Chicago. Worry. Like, I don't know. I like the idea of going to find um, a Methuselah and going to Diablo Rise, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. Leave it to me. The fact that it takes place in a Central American jungle. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that was the really popular to tie uh, vampires with uh, Mesoamerican cultures yeah. uh, back in the eighties and nineties. In fact, oh, Jojo's yes. Bizarre Adventure does that. <laughs> so did I think Forever Night did it too, but <clears throat> at least the original pilot with uh, Rick Springfield. I can't remember now. Yeah, <clears throat> but it was it showed up a lot in vampire literature at the time. Uh, I blame Anne Rice. Leave it to me. I had some novel I found in a thrift store once that it was just some vampire archaeologist who got, you know, became a vampire because some blood drinking pseudo deity bit him when he was on a dig. Uh, angsty, angsty. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm thinking of a, 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 a campaign where the whole premise is that some other player characters did this and now they're back. Or some other vampires do this, and now they're back in your turf. They're high on this Methuselah blood, um, and now they're running rampant. Or uh, it could be like a gold rush thing, where the whole adventure is about getting this Codex of the Damned or a map. Um, or if you wanted to, do, like, I mean, let's let's face it, especially in the old world of darkness, uh, the whole thing was doing a crossover campaign. Where everyone could make their character from any of the books. Uh, yeah, that's the thing that people are doing. Yeah. Actually, yeah. running those games yeah. was a pain in the ass. Oh yeah, but yeah. like, yeah. I want to be a naga, and I want to be a Sabat vampire. You know, I want to be this. I want to be yeah. that. Well, I yeah, want to be a mage. Okay. There was a time that Tom ran a game of werewolf, and everybody else was like, "I'm gonna be this special kind of shapeshifter. I'm gonna be a Bastet. I'm gonna be a whatever the spider ones were." I'm like, "Tom, I'm gonna do something revolutionary in a werewolf game. I'm going to play a werewolf." <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> so that would actually make it easier to do as a one shot. It's like, yeah, make up whatever you want. Fine, I don't give a shit. Uh, there's an NPC wizard who creates a portal for you to just jump in front of the pyramid. Yeah, Fuck sure. all that. Now you're there. Now go deal with that shit. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, actually, I kind of like yeah. the idea of the people coming back and uh, setting up you know, their own territory and basically declaring themselves an independent state. Yeah. Because exactly. that would just co totally go fuck with everybody in the area. Like, the you know, the Camarilla would be pissed off, the Sabat would be pissed off, mm -hmm. anybody nearby would be pissed off. Because suddenly the delicate power structure that there always is in these games is upset. And so, then, like they could offer they could lure people, hey, we'll teach you the ritual of the bitter rose. You'll be able to suck the blood of your elders in, in no time flat. Uh that would that <laughs> what could go yeah. wrong? Yeah. New new bad guy faction. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. 
Um, God, I, one thing I did notice, uh, just looking at the uh, Wanderer's stat block, is that he can also know any rituals you think he needs to know. Um, so That was a popular phrase oh, yeah. a long time ago. Oh, yeah, any others you want him to have. So, like, yeah, do you remember what any other, like, kind of, like... There was one movement? ritual that you could use with Thaumaturgy where you could essentially create a microscopically thin uh, blast of air that would cut somebody like a blade. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do that. There was another ritual that would let you let you literally you pre prepare it ahead of time, mm -hmm. and then if somebody staked you, mm -hmm. you'd activate the ritual and you lose a blood point or something, so many blood points, and it would just use your blood to jettison Jeez. the stake. <laughs> Did. Yeah. I didn't really. I, I just kind of like glanced over uh, the stat block for this character. Mm -hmm. But my god! Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 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 fucking wild. Elders are elders are just yeah, I completely forgot. Yeah. insane. If you look through a Sorry. copy of Elysium, which was one of the supplements that came out, I think during second. Um, yeah, they are just bonkers to start with. So. See, that that would be more yeah because the that was the, the stats of uh the setting up the rules for having players play the elders yeah uh, they even gave like role-playing tips like rule of three always stand over somebody stuff like that mm -hmm. like always be at an elevated position and speak in patterns of three to establish dominance easily done so like one thing you could do is actually all right everybody make an elder a throwaway elder you are the court of the, the the prince of chicago or whatever he found the codex and a map to this pyramid he wants you to go kill this methuselah uh but on the way you find this ritual the bitter rose oh wait you could all this gain in so power cool. and then overthrow the prince on uh, when you come back Ooh, moral dilemma or not it's uh, free real estate yeah it's free real estate <laughs> <laughs> So that, that would actually make this fun, but like, I just, I love that this is one of the first published adventures for Vampire, and it's just like, fuck your campaign premise, this is not something, uh, this can, this can derail any campaign, it's like putting the, this is like the to Tomb of Horrors, but for Vampire, maybe that was the motivation, they wanted a Tomb of Horrors, but Could for Vampire, be. um, like, a reason to motivate player characters to go in, and a reason to kill them once. We'll see in the second thing, because... Uh, Ross, what... Yeah. Do you, said you, you, you went over Greyhawk Adventures, you said? Uh, Castle Greyhawk. Okay, okay. If it was Greyhawk <laughs> Adventures, this guy actually... Nigel Finley worked on that. Uh, That's but not, he, didn't, he didn't do Castle Greyhawk. Yeah. So, so. Uh, yeah, the author is, uh, yeah, Nigel Finley, uh, who, uh, wrote quite a bit of stuff, right? Yeah, no, he lived in... I mean, he... Uh, born in 1959, passed in 1995. He did a lot of uh, writing starting, it looks like, in 84. Yeah. Did a whole bunch of stuff for AD&D, Roll Aid, stuff like that. Uh, did a whole bunch, a lot for Shadowrun, which might be some of the reason that he has some insight into Mesoamerican, uh, mm -hmm. not because that was big in Shadowrun. Um, but Battle Tag, Blood Shadows, Chill, Earth Dawn. Yeah. He worked. He wrote Gerb's Illuminati. Maybe now, uh, that's big. That's actually kind of a big deal. Um, yeah. But he was also another big deal that he worked on. He was a co-author for um, Vampire: The Vampire Masquerades, The Succubus Club, oh. which that's it was like good. one of the first big established Elysiums, and it was you know a, it, it was a prototypical goth bar, goth vampire bar. Stop they even released a tie-in music oh, compilation. Okay. <laughs> I don't have it, but Ooh, I, I, I kind of want to go back and find out what's on it. Maybe for yeah. next episode. I bet uh, that's gold. It was like a tiny yeah. bonus at the end. I don't know. Well, uh, crossover with Nightclub Radio. Uh, Nightclub Radio. So, oh, you yeah. could do that, yeah. Yeah, well, definitely have to find it. Music from the Succubus Club. Uh, let's see here. Nice. 2000. Uh, let's Sean, you, you probably know since you're probably you're very well versed in the world of darkness. Um, uh oh. At this point in the story, in the saying, Mexico is pretty much all under Sabat control, isn't it? It's supposed to be, but yeah. the Sabat was still, they hadn't really defined it that strongly. Um, second, it is where they really started coming up with a lot of the details of the rest of the world. Uh, they yeah. were kind of doing it in first ed, 
but mm-hmm. yeah, I'm starting to notice the font in this is very similar to first edition font. So it, yeah, it imagine... is absolutely first edition. Yeah, one hundred. Kind of like um, what was it? Hunters Hunted, which was mm-hmm. yeah. It's a fantastic supplement in respect that it's yeah, uh, killing yeah. a regular. Yeah, Hunters Hunted is to a regular vampire what this is to, to a Methuselah. <laughs> yeah, you're playing mortals trying to kill, uh, trying to kill regular vampires, and you know it just basically gives this entire paragraph about how you know you are woefully outclassed. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, and this is that which is before Hunter the Reckoning, which is a completely different. Yeah, uh, very very odd take on the uh, uh, premise of pe- humans hunting vampires. Yeah, um, interesting yeah. though. Interesting, yeah, but uh, certainly a product of its time. Um, yeah, this is uh, uh, well. We're never gonna have to look into the Succubus Club or the soundtrack at some point. Uh, yeah. Apparently, someone uploaded it all to YouTube. I just searched right now. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, cool. uh, it's an hour of I'm sure all time bangers, uh, and classics. I'm uh, I'm willing to bet it's God. This it might have Switchblade Symphony and Crypt Shadows. I'm guessing, but yeah. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but we'll yeah, in. In our next episode, we will definitely talk about uh, the actual adventure itself. Uh, I'll try and get Caleb in there because as, a, as a, another GM who loves Dungeon Crawls, I'm sure Caleb will have some interesting thoughts about the uh, design uh, of this adventure um, and just the premise of going to a really sunny place far from civilization with lots of people to hide and drink their blood and go in this pyramid and fight an incredibly powerful vampire that will... Uh, has a special magic power that will render your guns useless and uh, oh, yeah. then uh, uh, fight them and, and see how that works for you. Um, <laughs> God. Just, yeah. Uh, it's going to be very, very good. Uh, and then you get to Well, he cap- does like death traps, so. Uh-huh. And, and your reward is uh, becoming a, a criminal and a monster to vampire society if they find out what you did. So the screen goes black, and then a big red uh, sign that comes up that says, "Congratulations, you suck." Yeah. <laughs> hey. Given, yeah. given Caleb's love for the World of Darkness setting and system, I think he'll really enjoy this. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, it's going to be very good. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, thanks for uh, lending your expertise, Sean and Baz. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, see how many we can. We can get both of you back here to to help guide Caleb through the pyramid. I'll uh, be sure to not fall to torpor um, yeah. <laughs> after I, after my stream. Uh, yeah, you know, vampire streaming. You know. Yeah. No, it's true. Uh, that's what else you got to do during the day. You can't go out. Um, right. Too much yeah. sun. Too much sun. Um, like, you, fortunately, the Yucatan isn't sunny at all. Right. Uh, I'm no. sure those vampires will be fine. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll take you uh, all. And where can people find you, Baz, on the internet? Oh, uh, I'm at Twitch, Future Wolfington. Uh, and Sean has a project in in the works, and when when you get ready to announce that, it's gonna it's gonna be I mean, again, it's gonna be well until I can get everything where I'm happy with it because I'm, yeah. I'm learning a whole lot of new skills for editing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So. Yep. It's kind of a but, whole thing. Yeah. Hey, I, not. Hey, I kind of knew it would take a while. Yep. All right. Uh, well, thank you all for listening. And thank you all so much for supporting the RPPR Patreon. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Ladies.
Okay, so we got four at least. Damn it, Fenton. Man, losing mastery is just not worth resetting this. Losing a one defense on Faust is worth. Got to my hands all gone. Oh god. Oh jeez. Oof. I should be trying to be more careful.
<sighs> yeah. Oh my, this is so much. Thousand L. Oof. Let's see if this is nothing. Greetings. Sarah's gonna be Helena. Okay, nice. <laughs> okay, so what is it? Brooke is gonna be him. Okay, hmm. ew. That sucks. I gotta get Monroe. I would have really liked to get Helena before him. Which means we actually have to do this mission, then we have to do chapter six and. Oh, fuck. Wait, that, that also forgets Benji and Caius. Okay. What the fuck is Benji and Caius going to be? Wait, <laughs> Samara and Corvin swap places. Oh my god. They're right next to each other. Which doesn't, basically means you get them in the same mission then, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. They're in the same mission. Okay, okay, let's skip this. Okay, oh uh, yeah. Fuck me, the Earth Magnetic Fit. There's all those good ones. A commando as well. Fuck. Okay, let's do the rank ups and just get. <sighs> I'm not gonna use you, Monroe, so I don't really care what I make you. HP increased by half of mastery. Oh, yeah, that's why you have so much HP. Yeah. But your dex is just the worst. Don't boost your dex. Yeah, here, let's make you a magician. Okay. Now, Helena, your thing is what? Fortitude 25 years old. Yeah. So you're really tanky. Okay, let's defend our dude. Okay, you boost allies. That's not really that useful, though. But it would make you super tanky if I do that. Just turn you into an ultra tank. And I have. This will boost your hit points. Good, uh, so strength up. She doesn't really need that. Let's do this. I think you're just a defender. Corvin, I'm getting you early, but I'm not really going to use you because your ability is just. Fuck <sighs> it. Okay. Let's do, let's make you a stalker. Oh, wow. Intense music. You can technically take their relics early. It's actually a good board has that. So first, if we want to heal on both sides, we want people are going to use on both sides by using you three. We want to use you, you, and you. Three, four. Okay, that works. Let's 
Let's see what I can do. Here. If I must. Fast is kind of really efficient. Oops, right now it doesn't matter. Fast sense is after it shoots, I'm pretty sure. But do I still only have one healer? No, they really do front load you with healers, don't they? Step slightly. Uh, hit him. Weaken him up. So first, how much will you take? They actually hit you. Uh, let's can we make that a lower 41. Yeah, let's do that. Nice, come on, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that made it for that last. Thalano comes in here, smacks this guy, and murders him. What you that now? guy, that's more useful, honestly, probably. Good, that's a really good level up. Okay, we we'll hit hard. Beck is almost dead. Damn it, okay. It's on. Really, that means our last two of our last gear is going to be healers. That explains a lot, actually. You just don't get a lot of healers. It is willed. Embrace your fallen fate. Why is my voice? She sounds like she's on Queen Loot. 
and given up on life. Well, I guess that is a possibility. Here. She gave up on life during the recording. What will you do now? That's what was good because it just makes an Yankee and Caster hit. Can we get a first? Like, bonk. I'm a healer. Smack him. <laughs> Go first. Nice. Ooh. Every time you see Shadow Shadow, you're like, oh, we dodged it. Okay. Nice. Ooh, boy. Could we reverse that? Replay? And swap those then? Kodor. Kodor. Gosh. I'm gonna have three different dwarves in this room. I'm gonna have three different fighters, not three different dwarves. Stop him here. You go. Experience is a fine weapon. Up him there. And we want to get someone in the white green and someone in the blue. Be possible. To help Easily over. done. And those three will get up and be able to work together. Oh, if that's going to be enough to see up here. Um, yeah, okay, so first off, you can join them. As okay. you command. You can join in there. Guys, oh. we'll catch up later. You don't need it. It's on. Right. Okay, now over here. Another level. What will you do now? Yeah. I guess missing the enemy though then the XP you get from the manual dodge, dodge. 
Not kill the guy, but hurt him. And as soon as they have Huron, they're going to go to Huron. They're all sure to get the liberty, so it's just like Okie dokie, oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 oh Impressive. Get paid. Who's around the oh, I hope no one saw that. <clears throat> Oof. That's a. Oh, I don't really. I don't see a bunch of rogues in this run, technically. What will you do now? Leave it to me. Okay, so she now becomes a promoted unit and now we have a choice. Her first momentum damage per 30,000 now means she will choose with us. Ben's probably gonna die again. No, he's only no 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 no. To hit him with the stronger shot we can. Ooh, come to me. For this, you're not going anywhere. I know I can be strong. Okay, I've got it. Yeah, I better get paid. You won't be needing that.
Too cute to blend in in a game like this. It. Thanks Don't to the waifu me. wars, you yeah, too adorable not to get noticed. Okay, now we gotta figure out what to make him, right? The mountain needs to get damage increased by his level. His small dude is garbage anyway, so no matter what I do, he's gonna be really, really fragile. Let's make our upgrades, we have one of each. Let's uh, so, so, we'll make him have a 50 defense, so we're gonna ruin his defense, and let's see, already he's upgrading his level. If I must. Get a move on. level really just doesn't fit the theme. We just gotta go through a really weird thing at this point. Okay. Inquisition kind of push your fortune and these magic stuff. Bleh. So we go with major enemies. Guardian's really good for just making heals last longer. And he becomes way more tanky. Uh, we can see here, uh, Frost is currently really okay tanky, but decent stats, really good accuracy. As we can also see, we look at this thing, Frost has high speed, 
high tax goods. Maybe we make them into this, we lose some tax, but we get some. Oof. Oof, it goes real fragile. What's this, a healing range? Dodge and please make the junction. Having a two range heal already would be really good, especially because I'm not doing it. More work. And they can do this. Which would make the cost way more useful. This should work out. I don't say this is going to work out. Yeah, buddy, no. Stab. Stab. Here's the thing. Well, his master increased his armor penetration. Thief. But uh, speed increased armor penetration. Yeah, those two together would be really good. Do my best is okay. Uh, later is just, I think, Bad. So I'm gonna make him thief because that buffs his armor penetration more. As we can see, his master is good and his speed's really good. Which will turn him into a really high. Oops, I think it's like From ember turn. to flame. So he's doing a speed. Th oh. <laughs> Thalonel just ate all those guys. They, they came into that fight. And vanished. Leave it to me. Here. Get a move on. I here to help. I risk energy and get healed. Okay. Me? Rose. Soften the grave. Thanks for the save. Okay. Um, I better get paid. You won't be needing that. And you can. There we go, and I will weaken that guy just enough. And then we don't want. I don't know, we'll probably do this boss in the next round, but it's fine if that happens. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay, Corbin, you can just. Interesting. Be up here. Just be there. Be up here. Are you worried that you can't chain bosses? It's an interesting way to try and make it so you can't get another XP off them, I guess. <laughs> Fuck. Thanks for the save. <laughs> Go. Because the thing that heals itself. But I decided to avoid it because. Well, then you're just doing the same thing again and again and again. Off you go! Get a move on! Impressive, is it not? I mean, you can't even disarm this guy, yeah. Try to make sure that you don't break the game with that. Dark decks. <laughs> Next round's on me! Yeah, I better get paid. 
You won't be needing that. They're almost leveled up, Lord. Gosh, I just realized that the next mission is after this. Okay. First up, let's heal Iris. Don't look at me. You have no honor. You have no honor. <laughs> Jerky, oh nice. Oh. Stand a chance. That's true. Lex is just insanely good at the momentum of even if you're drinking that she has a high crit chance. Valano did amazing. That was totally okay, but I guess he dodged a lot. But is it based on third group? I guess it's because he took so little damage and now the healing he did. Either way, uh, yeah, that's the bandit raid and stuff. You know. <sighs> Let's wait till we get to the area where we can save next. I can't. Either way, I'm gonna let this just play out in the meantime. There's something really to answer around right now. Man, 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 man. The funny thing is, though, yes. Corbin is going to show up in the mission. Okay, we have the hmm. aqueducts, then we have the. No, wait, 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 we have the Alexa mission next. Then we have the aqueducts. Then we have. Oh, okay, yeah, I forgot. So, yeah, no, actually, there's a little bit. There's a little bit more. It's like. Pray. What? Surely not. If you insist. <laughs> I've said my part. Don't worry. <sighs> oh, gosh. But yeah, so Corbin's gonna join us now, and I'm gonna use him a bit. You know, he's. Ugh. I guess the mastery thing's okay if you do a bunch of guys that always master, but I legitimately can't figure out a way to make it easier. So, okay, so, the, so we get Corvin next. Hurry up, baby. And then we get Caius' replacement. Well, Benji's replacement, Caius' replacement, which means. I don't know who that will be, actually, when I think about it. Surprised. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, Faust is I think Faust's conversation to Sloane about pink is a reference to Sloane's original outfit. Master. Which I honestly like more than her base one, but that there's some reason to that. Okay, so so we Pathetic. So Monroe is replacing Corvin. Elena. Okay, let's see. We get. Uh, so next is Vesta, and then 
We get Arima. <laughs> We're gonna have Arima join us in the fight where we fight against Arima. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be amazing. Oof. This presenters. Yes. Your dodge is your true speed, your dexterity, and level. Oh, yeah, so the hit rates in Dark Deed are actually the double roll system. GBA fire emblems, okay. Very well. Oh, so luck times 3.07 plus the weapons crit? Wait, but well that means, okay. So you would. Wait. Wait, so. Your Highness. Hmm, I think that means 0.7. Right? Because otherwise that would be really. So what is your luck at 7? Your crit rate is 42 per with the pike. Yeah, and that was a plus 2. Yeah, so that really is, is 0.7. So it's weird. So yeah. Wow, because her dodge is so high. <laughs> Crit is increased by 24 dodge. It's so high, this dumb. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I went all over here, just like any attack that does other things in my hand, I'm just like, nope. Heal myself and whatnot. And then we give your the advanced stats, which is okay. So ten percent of your hit points gets added to your okay. Now that I actually understand that, so that's effectively a plus three to all of these. Okay. Uh, can we do what I do for right now? No wonder about the rules. Oh, we'll use some combos, more combos next time. What the 
first up, let's. Okay, thermal. Let's give you an accuracy with it just so we have it. I mean, it's about the same as this guy, but it's. List of. Oh, I made a mistake there. That's my bad. The parts of the same damage are better if there's. Oof, that's the answer level. Okay. Uh, bye for right now. We, we deal with our mistakes. Like, come on. 